The Quran says in Surah Az-Zumur, chapter 39, verse number 6, that we have made the human beings in stages, one after the other, in three waves of darkness. According to Prophet Keith Moore, he said that this verse of the Quran, when it mentions the three waves of darkness, it refers to the anterior abdominal wall, the uterine wall, and the amniocorionic membrane, that the human being is made into stages in three waves of darkness. The Quran describes the various embryological stages in great detail. The Quran mentions in Surah Mominun, chapter number 23, verse number 12 to 14, that we have created the human being from a quintessence of clay, then made it into a nutfa, a minute quantity of liquid, then made the nutfa into alaka, a leech-like substance, then made the alaka into mudga, that's a chewed-like lump, then made the mudga into ezama, bones, then clothed the bones with lahem, that is flesh, and then we made a different creature. Glory be to Allah, who's the best to create. These three verses of the Quran describe the various embryological stages, the initial stages of development of a human being in the mother's womb in great detail. First it says that we made it from a nutfa which we discussed, a minute quantity of liquid. Then made the nutfa into alaka. That means a leech-like substance, which we discussed earlier. The meaning of the Arabic word alaka, it has got three meanings. One is a leech-like substance. It also means something which clings. And the third meaning of alaka is congealed clot of blood. Besides it looking like a leech, the embryo in the initial stages, it also behaves like a leech. It behaves like a blood sucker. It derives its nutrition from the mother through the placenta. It behaves like a blood sucker. So besides looking like a leech, it also behaves like a leech. The second meaning, something which clings, we know that the embryo clings to the uterine wall. Throughout the nine months that the fetus in the womb of the mother, it clings to the uterine wall. The third meaning of alaka is congealed clot of blood. And today's science tells us that in the initial stages, the blood does not circulate. And the blood clots in the vessels and appears like a congealed clot of blood. So all three meanings of alaka, alhamdulillah, today science says, is in perfect conformity to latest advances made in embryology. It further says, we placed it in a karar makin, a place of security. And we know today that the fetus is protected posteriorly by the spinal column, that the backbone, as well as the posterior muscles. And anteriorly, it is protected by the anterior abdominal wall, by the amniocorionic membrane, as well as the amniotic fluid, which protects the child. So the science today testifies that the child is well protected in the womb of the mother. It further says we made the alaka into a mudga. A mudga means a chewed like lump. So Professor Keith Moore took a plaster seal and made it look into a leech like substance, initial stage of embryo, and then placed it between his teeth. He bit it to make it appear like a mudga, a chewed like lump. And when he saw it, the teeth marks, it resembled the somites from where the nerves develop. And the Quran continues, we made the mudga into izama bones, then clothed the bones with lahem, that is flesh. Then we made it altogether a different creature. So what does the Quran mean that we made it into altogether a different creature? Till this stage of mudga, izama, lahem, chewed like lamb, bones, flesh. Till this stage, today science tells us, the initial stages of development of a human being is similar to the development of a fish, rabbit, and many other animals. Only after this stage does the human development differ in looks, where we have a head, then we have limbs, then the Quran says, we made it into a different creature. Glory be to Allah, who's the best to create. Imagine, the Quran describes the various embryological stages in great detail. And Prophet Keith Moore, he said, that this description given in the Quran, based on shapes, alaka, leech-like substance, mudga, chewed-like lamb, izama, bones, laham, flesh, is far superior 
to the divisions made in modern embryology, where we say stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four, is difficult to identify. The description given in the Quran is far more superior and much more easy. And previously, the scientists, they thought, it was in the 16th and 17th century, when scientists like Swamadam, they thought that the sperm contained the miniature human being. The head of the sperm contained the miniature human being, and then it grew in the womb of the mother. Later on, when they came to know that the size of the ovum is bigger than the sperm, D. Graffe, he said that the human being is present in the ovum and not the sperm. Later on in 18th century, Mao Paratis, he propounded the biparental theory that both the ovum and the sperm is responsible for the creation of the human being. They fertilize, they form the zygote, which the Quran has described in great detail.